How you doing? It's Luke at Cloud Consultant, and today it is Unit Five of our AZ900 Fundamentals. So, in the first few episodes, we covered cloud concepts. You can check this all in the description. Then we covered the core architecture of Azure, compute and networking, and now Unit Five, storage. So, first things first, you have to know what is a storage account. A storage account is a unified place for all of your storage needs within Azure. Now to access your storage account, it's via HTTP or HTTPS, meaning it's just via the internet, via a web browser, for example, and it is a global service. Now, you get a variety of types of storage that you can hold within your storage account. For example, standard general purpose V2, which in here you can hold either files, queues, tables, or blob storage, Blob storage just means binary large object, which is essentially a binary is what you would get at the end if you've had code and you've compiled it. So you had a .python file, .py, and then you've compiled that and turned that into code which you would run on a computer, for example, like down here, one of these icons. That's actually a binary that's running, not Python as such normally, right? And that's a blob. Now, you get premium file shares. Now, within your storage account, you'll get two types of blobs. You'll get your page blobs and your block blobs. <laughs> so your premium page blobs, binary large objects, and your block ones, a page would be more akin to something like a disk, like a hard drive, right? Whereas a block would be more like some, some specific unstructured chunk of data. For example, a file or an image, or an MP3, something like that. Now, the letters here you can see at the end will cover later, but essentially RS means redundant storage. So your standard general purpose V2 can go in either LRS, ZRS, which means locational, or zonal, or any of the other ones. So anything that's redundancy, it can use. Whereas your premium ones, these can either use low, is it lo locally that's it so these letters here after them rs blah 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 star just meaning all so all redundancy storage whereas here it's locally redundant or zonal redundant storage we'll get to what they mean in a minute but really what you just need to remember is for standard general purpose the redundancy can be anywhere across the world blah 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 for page blobs it's only local and for premium file shares and premium block, it's LRS or ZRS. Now, if you want to connect to any of these, you normally would use the HTTPS, and this would be what you're going to type into your URL, which would be the storage account name, dot the service, dot core, dot windows, dot net. Now, remember that for the exam, core, windows, net. And the service would be blob, DFS, file, queue, or table. So now we've looked at the storage account, let's explicitly look at the storage services. So we have these ones here, but to be more specific, we have files, which is a fully managed file share, accessible via SMB or NFS, or Azure Storage REST API. Now SMB and NFS are industry standards for file shares, but as protocols. REST API, that's essentially, an API is like a doorway to another computer, another bit of code, right? And a REST one, the way to imagine it is essentially it just waits for you to ask it something, then it'll give you it back. So it rests until you give it something. The key benefits, shared access, scripting and tooling, and familiar programmability. So if you're used to file shares, you already kind of know what to do here. Next up we have queues. Now, the queue size is the SA size, the storage account size, because a queue can be as long as you want because it's just an abstraction, it just has to fit in the storage account. And one message is 64 kilobits. Kilobits, kilobytes. I'll put a capital B. Let me see. Kilobytes, yes, so kilobytes. Use case, if you have a backlog of work to process asynchronously. So if you have a bunch of people who, you know, were messaging you, each one of those is going to be processed asynchronously, so it's not, you know, at the same time, it's just one after another, processing it through, you know, that kind of thing. Ticket sales, for example. Disks, that's just like a hard drive, a hard 
disk tables. So this is for no SQL, so this is structured but non-relational. What that means is it's in a table format, but it doesn't, but items in that table, so columns don't point to other tables for more data. It's just contained in here. Now this accepts calls from outside Azure, so remember that you can write a code which then goes and interacts with this tables. Finally, blob, scalable object storage, for example, text or binary files. Use cases, serving images, docs to a browser, storing files for distributed access, streaming, backing up data, data for analysis, etc. Now here we have our Azure blob storage tiers. So a hot tier, you're going to access it within the next 30 days, right? So it doesn't go more than like 28 days without being accessed. Cool tier is more than 30 days, so you don't access it every month, say, but you access it more than every 90. Cold is more than 90, but less than 180. And archive is you only access it like once a year. At the account level, you can specify that you want storage accounts or blobs to be created within this hot or cool tier, but you can't set that the entire account will have blobs always at the cold or archive tier, but they can always be at hot or cool by default. So that's blobs. Next up, within storage, let's look at Azure Migrate. This is for data movement. So Azure Migrate is what it sounds like. You're migrating data from an on-prem data center, say, into the cloud. So, unified migration platform with integrated tools. It has tools for discovery and assessment, so finding the servers that it needs to bring them up. Migrating these servers up into the cloud, pretty much with like a click of a few buttons. It then has a data migration assistant. Now this is for SQL, and it will check features and possible problems that you're gonna encounter when you go to the next stage, which is DB migration service. So server migration, is like the VM. Data, database, is actually when you're then gonna be moving the database. So not literally just the server and the disk, but then the database that it's accessing. And for that, they have database migration service for SQL. They then have an app service migration assistant. So if you have like an on-prem PHP or .NET app, it will then see if it can bring it up and use our app hosting service, which if you recall from the previous video, this here. So it will try and put you into here instead of having to spin up a virtual machine. So if we come back here, finally we have data box, which is a physical box. You think about it like, like a hard drive, right? With 80 terabytes. And for this, you can either use it to send stuff into Azure, or you can get it to get things out of Azure. So your data for data movement. Finally, for storage, we have file movement. Three ways to manage moving files. AZ copy, so this is like a CLI command, command line interface, so terminal command, to copy files or blobs to or from a storage account. Now I've got a picture here of one direction because it's one directional. I just like it. Storage Explorer is a GUI to manage files and blobs. So upload, download, or move between storage accounts and finally we have file sync so it's a centralized place for file shares it uses any protocol it globally has caching locally it facilitates cloud tiering and if a local server fails it can just easily replace it with a new instance now here there's two one directions because it is bi-directional and there we go that's everything for storage next time we're going to talk about identity access and security and then after that, we've only got one more module to go, which I'm yet to do. And then you'll be ready for your AZ900. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. Any comments, questions, queries, let me know below. Till then, I'll see you later. Take care.